Hello and welcome. Today I'm going through the books that I finished reading in February. Here in Ontario today, it is a rainy thunderstorm day, which is highly unusual for February the 27th. Let me know in the comments down below if the weather's been weird this year in your area, because typically we should have had a ton of snow by now, and we've barely had any snow at all this winter. But on to the books. The first book that I finished reading this month was Talking to the Dead by George Newry and Rosemary Ellen Guiley. I've read this book before, so this was a reread. This time I'm going through making particular note of all the names and the years as I'm pulling all the information together from the 200 books that I've read over the last two years. So yes, I've been busy plowing through books. I went off on a Da Vinci spiral, but now I'm going through and pulling all the information together. So if you're wondering why this particular page has paper sticking out, I'm also working on an episode about the Fox Sisters for my Hoax or Holy Grail series. And of course, they're very relevant to the issue of talking to the dead. By many, they're considered to be the start of the spiritualist movement or certainly the explosion of that movement. The book itself goes through not only the initial history of spirit communication, but it also goes through the development of the mini boxes, Frank's box, the ovulus, other communication devices, as well as talking about the questions involving spirit communication. Is it something people should be trying to do? Are there dangers involved? They also get into talking about parallel dimensions and other theories. So if that's a topic that interests you, it's definitely a good read. And I'll leave a card above as I've done a deep dive into this book, along with George Newry's other book, Worker in the Light, in a previous video. The next book that I finished reading in February was 1984 by George Orwell. It's a book that I initially read in 1983, and I have to say it definitely freaked me out. Reading it now in 2024 was no less creepy, especially now that I'm looking further and further into the banned book issue. The hashtag 24BB was started by MJ from Reading This Life. I'll leave a link to her channel down below. 1984 is one of the banned books. I had planned to read it this year anyhow, because it is also 40 years after 1984. So I'll be doing a comparison of Orwell's 1984, what he thought the world would look like, and compare it to what is the world like now in 2024. For an in-depth review of 1984, information about George Orwell, and Animal Farm, I recommend going to Books, Songs, and Other Magic, where Gareth does a very detailed review of the books and provides a lot of information about them. So I'm not going to recreate the wheel, and I'll leave a link to his channel down below and the episodes. After reading something heavy like 1984, I decided it was time for something light, like Vampires in the Mark series. This is by PC and Kristen Cast, a mother and daughter writing team. I've read this series before. I decided to read it again this year as part of the banned book project, as this series is also one of the banned books. And I'm currently working on a video where I'll talk more about that series as well. If you enjoy vampire series, there are 12 books altogether. It's basically like Hogwarts for vampires. 
The House of Night is a school where the fledglings, as they're called, are transitioning from human to vampires, and they need to be around the adult vampires in order for that change to happen. So they attend classes. There are a variety of big issues that come up. It was an interesting read. And as I say, I'll talk more about that in an upcoming video. The next book that I read, also one of the banned books, is Go Ask Alice. And this is Anonymous. I first read this book when I was a teenager. I remembered the story and I'm not giving anything away. On the back it says, January 24th, after you've had it, there isn't even a life without drugs. It started when she was served a soft drink laced with LSD in a dangerous party game. Within months, she was hooked, trapped in a downward spiral that took her from her comfortable home and loving family to the mean streets of an unforgiving city. It was a journey that would rob her of her innocence, her youth, and ultimately her life. Read her diary, enter her world, you will never forget her. As I said, I read this back in high school and I 100% agree. Once you have read this book, you don't forget the character because it is a very powerful, important story. Whether you're a parent with teenagers or you work with teenagers or you are a teenager, it is a very powerful story to read. Granted, it is fiction and I'll talk more about it in an upcoming video but it definitely gives you some insight into the different things that teenagers go through, how some of them get involved with drugs. I believe it was part of why I personally never got into drugs. The author, Beatrice Sparks, and this was written in 1971, definitely hit on the points of what's happening for teenagers, wanting to be accepted, wanting to experience new things. And even with a loving, supportive home, things can still happen. I believe this is a very important read. So like 1984, Go Ask Alice was a very emotional read, so I needed something a bit different. Thankfully, I could get back to my library and pick up a few different things. As you may have noticed, Go Ask Alice is a book that I picked up at my public library. The other book that I picked up during that visit, because I knew I was going to need something a bit lighter after, is A Cosmic Encounter, A True Story of an Alien Abduction. Now this is by Stuart W. Bench. It also on the cover says, An Engineer's Analysis of Extraterrestrials and Their Technology. So this author talks about his three experiences with aliens in the first part, the visit, his time on the spaceship, how it impacted him and his family. Unlike many abductees, he does not go through hypnosis to remember things. He has very clear recall. Part two goes into more detail about the ship the aliens themselves, space travel, all the different factors involved with that. So if you're curious about an abductee's experiences and his thoughts about the ships, it's definitely an interesting read. This month was definitely challenging book month, not just because I was rereading books that were banned, but because I did remember the stories and this particular book brought up a lot of different things for me. I'm not going to talk much about Looking for Alaska because Renee from Beyond Books, I'll leave a link to her channel down below. Renee and I are doing this as a buddy read, so I don't want to give too much away about it. This particular book, this book is by John Green, 
And I remember first reading it when I worked in a vocational high school. And yes, I'm that nerdy person who I read the novels that our students were reading so that when they came to the resource room, we could have conversations about the book, the characters. I enjoyed the story, and it's an important one. It's broken into two parts, before and after, and it follows our main character, Miles. I personally believe it is an important story to read. The one thing that I will say, and why it was difficult for me to read this time, although I highly recommend this book, like Go Ask Alice, for anyone who has teenagers or works with teenagers or is a teenager. There are a lot of important things that come up in here, like relationships, again, wanting to fit in and having friendships and the choices that people make. This time, it was a difficult read because it has been several years since I got a phone call on the last day of school letting me know that one of the beautiful students that I'd had an opportunity to work with and get to know was no longer with us. So we ended the school year saying goodbye to her, and it was definitely one of the hardest days, and a June doesn't go by when I don't think of her, and truly wish that her beautiful bright light was still with us. But books like this also point out that sometimes There is nothing else that we can do. We can love people. We can support them. We can try to guide them. But at the end of the day, they're going to make their own decisions. And then it is up to us, who are left behind, to try and move forward and continue to honor the light that they shone while they were here. If you're wondering why I'm suddenly looking outside, now there's massive hailstones falling so we've gone from a rainstorm with thunder to hail dropping it really is an unusual day despite the tears i definitely recommend reading looking for alaska so with the different challenging heavy reads that i had this month i decided to finish burning bright because i definitely needed something to uplift and inspire me and get me back into a positive frame of mind. It's interesting because February is typically a challenging month for me, regardless of what I'm reading, because this month seems to be the month that marks a lot of personal goodbyes. And so a lot of anniversaries and years of missing people come up during this month. So it's interesting that this is the month I also ended up reading Coascalis, Looking for Alaska in 1984. I guess I just wanted to see how much I could handle and still keep it all together by the end of the month. Since I'm here making this video and I'm not blubbering all the way through it, I guess I did okay, so yay me. And as I say, definitely it was was time to read Burning Bright and finish that book because I started this in December 2023, so this is one of the books that I needed to finish from last year. This is by Kelsey J. Patel. On the front, it says, Rituals, Reiki, and Self-Care to Heal Burnout, Anxiety, and Stress. She has a lot of great suggestions and tips. She does talk about Reiki and doing self-treatments, but she doesn't have the symbols that are used with Reiki, just letting people know. I will be definitely doing a closer look at her book in an upcoming video. On the back, she does say, you have a choice. There is a path out of pain, anxiety, burnout, and the feeling of complete overwhelm. The book you're holding is your invitation to choose that path. When Kelsey Patel was struck 
by searing back pain in her 20s while working on Capitol Hill, she had no idea that repressed emotions could manifest as debilitating anxiety and physical pain. What healed her was empowering herself to choose how she lived her life. In Burning Bright, her first book, Kelsey shares the self-care techniques that helped her get her body, health, and emotions back into alignment. Reiki, emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping, meditation, yoga, and more. As someone who lives with chronic pain, I would recommend, number one, be sure to check in with your doctor, healthcare practitioner, and get proper tests done to assess what your particular condition is. Because although, yes, I do agree that there are times where if we're stuffing emotions in, it can manifest as a physical condition. Get the proper test done to assess what it is that you're dealing with first on a physical level and then working on the emotional factors as well. For example, in my case, I know I have a totally <laughs> messed up lumbar. I have stenosis. I have twisted vertebrae. It's just a mess, and it's degenerative. And yes, I can laugh about it because I've known about this for decades. It got worse during a back injury at work, which is how I found out about the stenosis. But I'm mentioning all of that because, yes, emotions can impact all of that. But I have a physical condition that also impacts all of that. So when I'm doing exercises, whether it's Reiki or other things, I also have to be mindful of the physical reality of what's impacting. In other words, if I have pain in my lumbar, it isn't that I'm stressed about not being supported. It's not that I'm keeping things in. It's the reality that I have inflammation and other conditions in there. So some of that requires medication along with all the other things that I do. Reiki, crystals, getting into color therapy. My point is, before you just consider thinking your way out of a situation, please be sure that you're talking to other people, professionals, and assessing your full condition before putting some things into effect. The book is a good read with many helpful tips. February is definitely a month I'm always happy to be at the end of for a whole multitude of reasons. And hey, I'm still smiling. I'm still laughing. So it really is all good. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned. Let me know also if you're involved in the 24 in 2024 band book read. I've now completed four out of the 24 reads for this year. I'm certainly planning to get into more of the books, but I think at this point, it's been a pretty heavy, intense month. I did take a week off during Freedom to Read Week here in Canada, which was last week. So I need to take a bit of a break and read some things that are a little bit lighter and don't hit quite so close to home. I'm hoping to have the Fox Sister episode completed within the next two weeks, perhaps. I've started the politically correct bedtime stories where I read one of the stories, so that's definitely helped put a giggle and smile on my face. A big thank you to Ginger Bibliophile, who I mentioned in my last video. Check her out as well. Also remember to check out Renee at Beyond Books. 
I really enjoyed doing the live stream with her this month, and we will be doing that every third Friday from now until August. So in a few weeks, she will be joining me again. If you've enjoyed this video or found it to be of benefit, remember to give that like button a little tickle and leave me a comment down below. If you're still here, give me a thumbs up or a little smiley face as things like that help my videos get out to other book lovers, nature lovers, and for baby lovers as well. If you haven't already and you enjoy bookish content, nature videos, and just my silly cats doing goofy things, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you know when I upload content that may be of interest to you. Until next time, Take good care of yourself and remember, just one more chapter.